Uh, my name is Emma Mwangi. Um, okay, growing up in um, a place like Karagotu, um, I never once had anyone talk about mental health, mental illness, or something like that. So um, uh, after my dad died, I, I started feeling like something was not okay with me, and I did not know what to do because no one, no one really like talked about like you can have a problem in the mind. No one ever talked about anything I was experiencing or going through. Um, now until um, I was exposed in um, social media, exposed me to cutting myself. I was 14 because I was in Plazine, so I was 14 years old and then social media, um, I got exposed and um, they presented this um, um, idea that when you cut yourself, um, you'll feel better. So um, I started cutting myself and, and then that was not it. I stopped eating at all, at all, and for me that was very weird because, um, well, at that point I didn't see it as weird because I could go without food for so many days and I would not feel hungry. I could not get out of bed. There are days where I never knew what my mom was putting on because I never like even turned to the other side. So I used to sleep a whole lot. And then weirdly also, I used to sleep a whole lot and still lose sleep. So, um, so slowly um, someone identified, someone, a guy, a guy um, approached me and he was like something in you has changed and I brushed it off because at that point I was in my own world. Um, so I brushed it off and um, as I brushed it off, I someone someone again. Uh, there's a girl called Doria Chicken. Was like, by the way, I think you you're supposed to, you need to see someone. You need to talk to someone. And for me, it was like I was just going to see this person as a waste of time. So I met um, a psychologist from Kenyatta Hospital, um, Kendi Ashitiba, and when she saw my bruises on my hands from cutting myself, she was like, um, I think you need to go. I'll send you somewhere. And she was sending me, and she sent me to Kenyatta Hospital um, just to get reviewed and, and someone to like check up on me. And when I got there, um, a psychiatrist, um, I was almost, I saw a psychiatrist, and I remember the very first day I got to Kenyatta, um, they wanted to like um, admit me. And I was not for the idea because no one wants to be told that they're not okay. And when I was, um, when they told me that they want to take me to Mathari Hospital, I was like, no, I can't go there. It's for crazy people. They're like, no, it's a hospital like any other. And um, so I, I remember negotiating, um, asking them, can I go back home and then come back? Well, truth is, I was not going to come back. So um, they were like, no, we'll just take you. Of course, they they um, they sought for my consent, and I gave it to them. So um, I got admitted at Mathari Hospital. I would say it was easy and not very hard. It was easy, okay, it was easy at the same time, hard. Because I'm an expressive person. And so for me, they were just asking me questions and I'm like, yes, this is how I feel. No, this is not how I feel. Um, so I did not find it very hard to express myself because I'm an expressive person. And I think that is one of the things that really has helped me to like really talk about um, stuff that I'm going through. Okay. First of all, I would say it was a relief, yeah? Um, for someone just to come out and tell you there's nothing wrong with you, this is actually something that um, this is something that happens to so many people. So this is what so for me it was a relief. So after that, um, now after being um, admitted at Makari, I was put on medication and I stayed there for a, like a month, a month a month and a half. And um, there were therapy sessions going on at Mathari. So now coming after coming out of Mathari now was the, like a very uphill battle because I never saw that coming. I never knew healing. I never knew there was more to healing than just the word healing. First of all, it, it had to um, come from me, and I remember I. I remember I used to hate it so much when someone, when anyone used to tell me that it has to start with you, it has to start with you, you have to be willing. Because I was like, you guys don't understand. But for me, I took the initiative, I had to play my part. I had to be um, committed to um, going after this healing journey. And, for, and I also remember I had to stop stigmatizing my own self. 
because apart from other people stigmatizing you and uh, um, people um, struggling with mental illnesses, I had to stop stigmatizing myself. Um, my stigma, um, weirdly I experienced stigma even from um, some professionals that I was working with and this is not to say that they are all like that. I've worked with uh, mental health professionals who are very, very, very super supportive, even going to an extra mile of coming to even visit to meet my heart. And then um, I experienced stigma from my family um, because they never really understood what was going on with me and I understand it is very hard to help it is very hard to like um, help someone who doesn't want to like be held or who doesn't want to allow people in so I I also experienced stigma from friends I lost a lot of friends and I remember I've been to places where I was um, seeking for employment and people are not very sure if they should employ someone who has depression uh, what I'll say about that is um, the, um, there's been much more that has been done about it, but we need to do more. That is how I will write. So because now there is um, there are these um, candid conversations coming up, yeah, and I think um, compared to where we were, we are at a, we need to be in a, we need to go. It's not enough, but we need to do more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 um, it's much more compared to where we used to be. Um, what I will say about that is, um, okay, I, I'm, I'm speaking from a point of my own experience. This might not be a, um, an all size fit, like for everyone, but self-awareness, that, that was really, and still is very key for me, self-awareness. Once you know um, 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 yourself, like you'll be you'll be able to even identify your triggers so let's say if you're my trigger i'll find a way to like relate with you if um maybe if you're also my trigger like there are limits that i will i not want to like um spend so much time with you because i know if we get to some certain level you will be, you will be a trigger to me like bottom line self-awareness like once you get to know yourself that was that was the key uh, okay, it, it, it has taken me two years and counting because I admit there are still days that are very hard. Um, so two years and counting. So a lot of therapy sessions that um, sometimes they get really tiring because no one wants to be in and out of the hospital every time. Also, there is a support system. Support system was also one of the major things that really, really played a, uh, a major role in me getting better and I'm still getting better. Just finding your tribe, people who uh, identify with what you're going through. And sometimes they don't, they don't even have to like, they understand you to some, um, a level, um, a degree, um, uh, to a certain degree, I mean. So uh, what I used, to, what I did to like even overcome uh, me cutting myself, I I went to YouTube. There's a I went to YouTube. There's a there's a project called a butterfly project, where so if you struggle with cutting yourself, so I used to draw butterflies on my arm every time I felt like cutting, and also I had people who were like, if you ever feel like cutting yourself, call me. Literally, I have someone who I used to call at two a.m. Um, I think young people or everyone, everyone in social media, we need to like strike a balance. We need to find balance. If you know you're following someone, like for me, I had to like unfollow so many people um, because I was comparing my my life to them. So we, we need to strike a balance. For me, I we for me and what maybe I'll advise um, other young people, um, social media um, being a trigger to them is. Um, um, Follow people who pour into you. Like, don't follow people who are taking from you. Um, also, look at your strongest point of, um, um, of of attention because now that becomes your strongest um, point of influence. So, if I keep following um, maybe a certain person on social media who keeps on joking about um, suicide, um, 
that will become my um, my 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 point of influence. I'll want to like actually, I'll I'll want to actually to like actually act on it. If someone, if this is how me, this is how I used to see it, and still see it. If someone jokes about suicide, I'll be like, okay, so that they are actually like trivializing my matter. So I I should just have to just like go ahead and you know like no one really understands and, and stuff like that. So like responding to that question, let's. Strike a balance, let's find a balance. Okay. I would say unemployment, even from um, the friends around me. Um, so, this is how I, I even used to think, and this is how I, friends um, that I've talked to and still talk to think. So, if I do not have um, employment, if I do not have a job, what will I do? I'll sit, I'll sit around at, at home. And I'll now start thinking how my life is worthless, how I can't even find a job. Um, there's no need um, of me um, leaving. Now this pushes you to isolation because now if you stay at home, you don't have like a social life around you. And isolation is very dangerous because now that's where the attack grows stronger. So I'll see unemployment, social media as well. And um, what else? As young people, that is the those are the only two things that from talking to other people, um, about, yeah, and yeah, and peer pressure, um, wanting to like um, be um, like your friend, yeah, and co comparison really, yeah. I had to unfollow a friend of mine just because she was a trigger, and it's not because she's a bad person. It's because I'm I, I I'm looking at her, I'm comparing myself, and like wow. Things are really happening in our life. I must be very useless because things are not happening in my life. So I'll say peer pressure, uh, as cliche as it sounds, it is a major one. As I said before, there is more mental awareness than used to be before, but it's not enough. Because right now, if you go to Karagocha, where I come from, if you ask someone what mental health what mental illness is, they will not, they won't, I'm very sure, nine out of ten won't know what that means. Um, I think, I think, I think we should do more trainings, just educate people, because um, when someone doesn't uh, understand what I'm going through to a certain degree, it's because he or she doesn't have this, like our parents, like my mom. That doesn't understand, like won't even understand why you're getting depressed, you know? Because now people in the community think that uh, for you to get depressed, maybe you're having problems with your husband, um, um, and, and you know, like um, you, you, they, they don't understand, they really do not understand because in their time, they never used to hear anything like this. And so like it was not there, it was, but there was no that awareness was not there. So I think more trainings, let's talk to more people, get in the interior places like um, like Karagocho. And I know places like that is very difficult because now it gets it, it's very difficult to like access those people like but I think we should really like try more we went to like um, rural places because sometimes I sit down and imagine maybe somewhere right there is going through stuff and does not even understand what he or she is going through and that is really terrible. Um, I use blades. It's also something I'm proud of and hopefully this will not trigger someone. This, um, this is not, for me, um, this hasn't, I have not been kind to myself and gracious to myself, but sometimes it get really difficult. And when you feel like as if you're a burden, you can't call people anymore. So I take a blade and cut myself. And somehow it lies to me that, I mean, it lies to me that I'll feel better. Well, I will feel better. So this was three months ago? Yeah, this was three months ago. I still struggle. Um, a lot of people don't know about it. Because um, when you go through stuff like this for so many years, for a long time, people assume just because you're not dead, you're doing okay. And um, I also I actually used to put like long sleeve, but sometimes it would skip my mind um, and just go out like I am today with long sleeves. Um, because I don't want to like be, because people who struggle with cutting themselves, we are labeled as attention seeking. 
but we are not. Like, why would I cut myself and put on a long sleeve? What attention am I seeking? So I'm, I still struggle. I'm hoping that I'll come out of it. I know I will. Um, after my dad, after my dad was like shot dead, that really came as a huge blow, and it affected even my. Um, it affected how I interacted with other people. It affected my studies, and it affected um, it it affected my relationship with Mama. It affected so many things, including one of them, my studies. Okay, but you were able to sail through, of course, with therapy and all that. Yeah, yeah, I was able to like sail through. Although I did not start therapy like at fourteen years, I just started like in twenty seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that's why most students find it very hard to like access to like access um, help or even talk to their peers because people trivialize this matter. I like a couple of two weeks ago, and this is something that triggered me again. But of course, I'm not I'm not talked to someone about it. Um, just now because of the much because of the much self awareness I have, I am able to like. Um, handle it for the phone, but if it gets out of hand, I'll just reach out to someone. So um, a couple of um, two weeks ago, someone, and this is someone who knows that I'm struggling, and I struggle with um, suicidal thoughts, and say, "Do I could you or do you at all?" No, someone asked me, "Do you want to commit suicide?" Um, and I and someone else answered even before I said anything, and they were like, um, "What could you or do you at all?" And I was like, "How can you say such a thing?" You know I struggle with this thing. You don't joke about stuff like that. As much as we are, we um, we are used to each other. Yeah.